Hello guys, how is everyone? I hope everyone is having a better day than I am because this weekend I believe I received alcohol poisoning from a party I went to with a friend and now I am sitting here just drinking as much water as possible. I drank like fucking like two 64 ounces worth of water and I'm st like it's it's getting better like now because I got a cold I think I got a cold from being left out at the party because people were trying to help me and they put they put blankets on me they put jackets but I think because it was so cold out and I was out for that long just passed out um with people helping me and take me to the hospital that day um well I ended up probably receiving probably pneumonia probably or a cold <laughs> probably not like real pneumonia but I've been sick for a while now it's been about five days um I went out I actually went out Saturday morning technically at midnight the party was Friday at 11 p.m but then like technically I went out that morning so I'm getting better I took NyQuil last night um this is the water for my lift that I took um from my other campus um, that I left um, now on this campus and I'm waiting to go to work at 2 so I'm gonna take a nap probably soon but I wanted to talk briefly about Sabrina Claudio or as known as now Sabrina Fraudio I believe I made a video subbing her quite a few months ago about artists not really supporting black artists but yet wanting to take from black culture a lot of black uh, female artists are not receiving accolades for a genre that they helped and invented because they are too black and I follow R&B musicians and singers that have been told your sound is too black you look too black but yet all the time they have lighter skin or white female artists with soft, delicate voices to represent whiteness and femininity that you got to be soft and you got to be female and you got to be like the stereotypical woman, all feminine and just delicate and you can't have a Fantasia voice. You can't have a Tamar Braxton voice. Your voice has to be ha, 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 like FKA twigs minus like Minus the talent, because FKA Twigs is talented, and so is Tanashi and Janae Aiko, but we see a lot of these, um, they make a joke about the bananas and avocados singers, because there was this Vine video where a man was singing bananas and avocados, and he was pronouncing it bananas and avocados, and an in that stereotypical indie singer songwriter alternative artist voice the Tori Amos generation and we associate that with SZA because a lot of times SZA sings like that and I love SZA I think she has an amazing voice but now people kind of call it the bananas and avocados generation which honestly don't do SZA like that because SZA is dark skin or darker skin and she's talented and she can actually sing she ain't just a bullshit artist okay Tanashi isn't a bullshit artist Janae Aiko isn't a bullshit artists who else her isn't a bullshit artist like there are so many talented female artists that are of african descent kalayla abra nao so many black british female soul artists african-american female soul artists and r&b artists or that's an experimental electronic genre like nao it's just so many georgia smith and we have sabrina claudio who is known for her sensual, soft-spoken vocals and her very melodic R&B music that a lot of people are fans of. And I personally never had a problem with the music that I heard from her. It's just when I first heard of her, she was listed with SZA, Janae Aiko, Tanashi, and a lot of the alternative R&B black female artists that I listened to. So I originally thought that she was black. And then when I looked her up and I saw what she looked like, I thought, hmm. Now, I have nothing against um, non-black artists in a traditionally black genre. I am a fan of Kali Uchis. I do like Alina Baraz. When I heard Fantasy, I was a fan. I love it. Who else do I? I love so many white female singers and artists, but I typically like those who are in the pop genre. So I like Kimbra, Lana Del Rey, 
um, Charlie XCX, I believe, Carly Rae Jepsen, again, Tori Amos. I'm a huge fan of Tori Amos, Kate Bush. So if I do like, you know, white female artists, they're, they are likely in rock um, or they are in alternative pop genres. Um, Stevie Nicks, of course. So I'm not someone that like discriminates against who I listen to or who I support. But the problem is, I thought, you know, I, I, I'm kind of tired of these white girls all of a sudden wanting to do R&B. You know, once they saw how popping the genre up um, was, how popping black girls are, you know, now all of a sudden they want to do something that they would have avoided like six years ago. So I just felt a little bit suspicious of Sabrina and I had nothing against her. I didn't know anything about Sabrina. It was just something about her that I felt was off. Um, the way that she looked, the way that she came across to fans online, how she would brag about writing her own songs. I actually write my songs and she said it very snippetly when a fan asked her, oh, your music is so amazing. Like who writes the, the music? Like, do you write your own songs? And she said, yeah, I write all of it. Like something that she should be proud of, which is ironic because I watched an interview and she said that although she writes her own songs, they aren't her experiences. So regardless, like it's not totally authentic if you're not even writing from your own experience. And I understand like we are all storytellers. We like to tell different stories because I am a writer. I write fiction. So I write stuff that has nothing to do with me, but I can obviously relate to because of what other people go through and being a black girl myself I hope no one is watching me talk to myself to a damn camera but they, I don't care but I understand yeah we write from other people's experiences because we are storytellers but I just feel like there was something about Sabrina that did not seem 100% authentic but I try to give her a chance and come to find out, a couple of days ago, someone sent me a link to a thread that they had also linked me to um, from an old account called Oh Damn You're Ugly. And the account was manually retweeted, which means that people will copy and paste a tweet you made into um, the Twitter bar that they type out the tweet. Then they put RT, which stands for retweet, in front of it. Then they put the colon between the RT and the um, tweet that you had made. And then in front of that, then they put their commentary. And nowadays, we can just quote it and we don't have to do all that. But since it was 2012, 2013, someone had man retweeted Sabrina Claudio saying, I want to dress up as a black girl for Halloween. This was 2012. A long time ago but since it was so old and since the tweet has um, since the account has been deleted uh, there's no telling what else she said but um, from my understanding that account was a troll account and she ran it and she specifically made black girl jokes and she also talked about black guys saying like I sang like a fat black man and she made quite a few obscene jokes before oh it must suck to be a black girl without ass she just said a lot of horrible stuff. And then, I'm sorry, a, a mutual told me that she had a fallen out or a confrontation with a girl, a Dominican girl on Instagram. And I saw the screenshot. And what happened was the girl was told that she looked like Sabrina Claudio. So her reply was, you think I look like every pasty white girl? Now, in my opinion, that was uncalled for. I don't support the girl responding that way because she could have just ignored it or said thank you. I don't know why she felt the need to call Sabrina a pasty white girl, but Sabrina responded much worse and said, I'd rather be a pasty white girl than a dirty chonga. And my understanding is chonga is a term in the Miami Latinx community where it originally was used as a slur towards brown Hispanic girls and it meant those who were of a impoverished background and they are also sexually promiscuous. Now, I guess um, Latinx have reclaimed that and they call each other that. Like, you know, a lot of us say nigga to each other as African-Americans, which I don't really believe because if that were the case, then more Latinx would say that than nigga. Uh, I hear about the Miami Cuban culture where so many white Cubans like Sabrina Claudio say nigga. So if that were the case, you would say that word versus nigga. So I, I don't believe that Sabrina did not say it with um, 
racial intonations. I believe that she did. I believe that she was saying, I'm not like you dirty Hispanic bitches. You know, I may be Hispanic, but like I'm white, I'm Spanish, you know? And I was disgusted. That's very disgusting to say. Like, I I know Hispanic girls. I know brown Hispanic girls. And she actually didn't say, oh, I'd rather be... um, She actually didn't say dirty changa. I think she said sweaty changa. And being around a lot of brown girls, I know the connotation of sweaty. Hairy. Dirty. Like, I know. Dirty brown girls. Sweaty brown girls. You know, she might as well have said that. And that just pretty, and this was recent, I guess this was a couple of days ago, or maybe it was last year. I don't know. Someone said this was like recent, like 2018, when Sabrina said that. So, sure enough, I did not want to believe that Sabrina was behind that Oh Damn You're Ugly account. So, I typed in her name, Sabrina, and the person um, um, that referred the um oh damn your ugly account to me did not have a lot of followers they just made her account so i figured they specifically made that account just to expose sabrina and there's actually been quite a few accounts doing that and before i said i'm i I like sabrina's music but i'm not so sure about her because she had made comments in 2015 about how white girls can have afros because she has curly hair so she posted a picture of her curly hair and say oh they said white girls can't have afros but look at me and she got dragged for that so I kind of looked at her funny but then a couple days ago I said I'm not going to hold a three-year-old comment against her but then a person said well she said more than that so um when I looked at that, I thought the person was lying. I thought they were just a hater. You know, there's there's actually so many accounts that just that that's just made to expose Sabrina. And I'm thinking like, okay, people are probably jealous because she's pretty, she's talented, she has a lot of fans, guys and girls like her. Like a lot of people have a crush on her, so people are just out to like get this Sabrina girl. And I and again, I didn't personally like her either. But like to go out your way to make accounts just to expose someone is a little bit weird to me. Like that's kind of creepy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but. I did investigate and I didn't say anything. I just liked the tweet. And then when I looked up Sabrina, people said, hey, Sabrina, Sabrina, you know, referred to old damn you're ugly as Sabrina. So I'm thinking maybe this isn't Sabrina Claudio. This isn't D Sabrina. This is just someone with the name Sabrina. And, you know, they are just <laughs> they are just using this to get back at Sabrina. So then I see a picture of a girl FaceTiming a guy and this guy says, I love you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking this looks, this looks awfully like Sabrina Claudio. So I type in the full name, Sabrina Claudio and voila, Sabrina Claudio. Someone says, Hey Sabrina, you remember this account you used to have? And Sabrina says, I low key missed it. So I said, bet she's racist. She actually ran an account saying anti-black things. She actually said disrespectful stuff about black girls. And now she is profiting off of the genre that black Black girls have been doing before her bet so I tweeted Sabrina Claudio really ran a troll account between 2011 and 2013 and you guys try to make it like I was just jealous and judgmental and I was a hater but turns out she actually did say things about black women and girls that were disrespectful and at the time I was just venting I did not think it would blow up I simply thought okay a few people are going to retweet it some people are going to like it some people are going to call me a hater I'm going to get some trolls well a couple of hours later more people retweeted it more people were quoting it and more people were directing their followers to a thread I made exposing the tweets because I had screenshotted it and like gave proof as to how that was Sabrina um no it's not that guy I'm waiting on this guy to text me. he hasn't texted me back he hasn't left me on read either but he hasn't exactly read it and I know that damn trick on together it's some other guy trying to talk to me that just sent me an Instagram DM but more people were like oh my god really like I love Sabrina and they said I can't believe it like why would she do that like oh my god and then other followers of mine retweeted it and then other big accounts were like, oh my god, so this bitch actually is racist. I'm glad I wasn't a fan. And then, sure enough, it becomes this Twitter conversation. Sabrina Claudio's racist. She had a troll account from 2011 and 2013 disrespecting black girls, saying stuff about brown Hispanic girls as well. And 
you know, a lot of threads went viral. They went platinum. Tweets made it up to about 5,000 retweets and likes exposing Sabrina Claudio. And then, you know, a day later, Kalani apparently unfollows Sabrina because Kalani doesn't want to be associated with that. And a pop culture Twitter account um, talked about Sabrina being exposed for racist tweets. And a lot of people don't really know who Sabrina Claudio is. She's kind of popular in, like, the Twitter community or, like, those who kind of go out of their way to look for alternative R&B artists. So it's typically um, black people who spend a lot of time on the internet looking up music. But so many people were just disgusted. And to be honest, I'm glad because I never really liked her. I tried to give her a chance. I liked her music, but I felt like there was something off with her. I didn't think she seemed like a nice person. She seemed fake. She seemed conceited. Like a lot of her Twitter feed would be just about how hot she was, how sexy she was, and that's fine. But it just seemed like so disingenuous. Like, look at me. I'm so cute and sexy. I look so good. And, like, she would never interact with her fans, really. If she did, it was kind of, like, short and, you know, not very personal. And she worked with Khalid in Black, which Black is spelled, like, the letter six. I mean, the number six. <laughs> and then L-A-C-K. And a lot of people look at it as six black. I um, It's actually pronounced black. But she's worked with black male singers and artists. But I noticed that she never worked with any black female singers. Um, she doesn't really follow any black female artists on her Twitter or Instagram. She doesn't really go out of her way to support black women in music. I think the only person she follows maybe is Georgia Smith, who's very light-skinned and mixed race. Um, even Tanashi follows her on on Instagram, but she doesn't follow Tanashi back. Um, she doesn't follow SZA, who I believe she greatly took from. I, I, I generally believe that Sabrina pretty much took a lot of her sound from SZA. Um, SZA used to have a very mellow sound. Like SZA actually just recently put up um, her other EPS um, because she put Z on title and google um, music and spotify first but then she just put up s and SZA actually used to have that mellow kind of sensual type of music like that chill sound now she moved more towards like mid-tempo r&b but she used to just have a lot of just chill alternative r&b music so she didn't really say anything to SZA even though they were in a gap commercial together um she doesn't say anything about her who i also believe she takes from uh, she just hasn't really said anything about Black Lives Matter or black girls. Alina Barras supports a lot of black female artists in the music industry. She follows a lot of black girl magic accounts. Um, she follows um, she follows like so many black girls. Um, Callie Uches used to have a Twitter where she would talk about Black Lives Matter, light skin privilege, um, um, colorism in the Latinx community, white passing privilege. And she would be very open about talking about how white passing she was or how people like saw her as light skin and the issues that the Afro Latinx community had. But I think for professional reasons, Callie did delete those tweets. But I remember that gap commercial where there was a black girl being used as an armrest, um, for a white girl that turned out to be her adopted sister, Callie Uches was very irate about it. She tweeted, this is disgusting that you would use black girls as your props. So Callie Uches, although she has had her fair share of problematic moments, I believe she got into an argument with a trans woman over the Poor Vita album where the woman made a joking dread about how Callie used brown face for Poor Vita. And then, well, no, Callie used brown face for her recent era um, with the Tyrant song featuring Georgia Smith and her new album, Isolation. But during Poor Vita, she was blonde and very pale. Which, I mean, I found that to be a reach because it was a painting. Uh, typically, a painting, you're typically you're going to be darker than you really are. Or you're going to be lighter than you really are. Um, her wearing blonde hair didn't mean shit to me. Um, a lot of people wear blonde hair. Um, just because she's a woman of color, wearing blonde hair doesn't mean that she's not trying to look quote-unquote Hispanic. Or, like, you know, doesn't mean that she wants to avoid her, like, brown um, identity and she wants to be white. And people say that about Selena Gomez, about how, like, Selena wants to be white so bad and they aren't white women. They aren't white Latinx women. They are brown, like, 
Uh, Selena is a brown Mexican and Callie's a brown Colombian. Um, but this ideal that light skinned Latina woman, women that look like JLo or like, you know, um, Eva Mendes, like they want to be white when like, no, they're just light skinned women of color that, you know, can pass for white at times or maybe Mediterranean, but doesn't mean that they want to be white. So I found that a little bit problematic, but I guess Callie felt a way about it. And then it got into this ugly shit storm and people were saying Callie was anti-black and transphobic. And it was, it was a, it was a mess. And I felt like both women have made points. I just felt like I felt like the whole thing with Callie Uches was kind of a reach. Like, I'm thinking, like, I don't think she's anti-black. I mean, she's had some issues where she fetishized black men in music videos, and she had one black man tied up. But, I mean, I think she's learned from that since. Um, she actually apologized, and she actually liked some of my tweets, like, critiquing her, saying, you know, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Kali Uches, but I'm not fond of some of the stuff that she represents. I feel like some of the stuff can border on appropriation of black girl culture, but she's also Latinx and brown at that. So I feel like she incorporates her own culture into African American culture and like she actually gives influence. But with that being said, yeah, Sabrina Claudio is exposed and hopefully people actually start supporting black female artists instead of trying to support these conventionally attractive non-black women who do the same thing that black women do um there is one guy that i go to school with who basically tweeted oh i don't give a fuck if sabrina claudio is racist racist or not i'm still gonna listen to her music and i say yeah capers will go so hard for sabrina i guess and since i know the guy i really wasn't trying to like start anything but uh, that guy is annoying uh, i didn't follow him actually because this is the same one that was like Oh, I don't care if 6 9 slept with a little girl. His music bops uh, or slaps. Or I love Kodak Black. I love XX Stentation or whatever you call his name. So you can tell like his judgment on these problematic artists. So I'm not tripping off that. But I think what makes me mad is that so many people are saying, Oh, it was in the past. Why can't you let it go? Because... Black girls like me did not have a foundation that we do today. Black girls like me truly felt like shit because of girls like Sabrina Claudio. You're sitting here making dreads and accounts about how ugly we are. We are already young teenagers. And for us to go online and to see people our age saying we suck and we're trash and we are evil people. And just our mere existence is horrifying that you want to dress like us for Halloween. Yeah, that's fucked up. And, like, it's the reason why so many black girls would kill themselves or girls like me had depression and anxiety in high school and was suicidal. And it didn't help to see people say that we're shit. I really felt like shit in middle school, in high school. And my dad caught on to that as well, like, falling for Eurocentric beauty standards. And with Sabrina, she wasn't internalizing anything. This was a white girl of privilege, a white Cuban girl of privilege that decided she was going to degrade black girls for the attention of black men to basically utilize black male violence against us and to think it's funny. Like she knew what she was doing. She was 15. Adolescent is the age where you should understand right from wrong. You know, y'all guys want to bring up the fact that we picked our nose in the second grade and you won't let us live it down even when we're 30. But yet a 15 year old could say something racist and it was a mistake. But people expect brown and black children to be held accountable for things they've said so many times. But yet a white girl that you find attractive or pretty says something and suddenly we should let it go. She's changed. And I don't believe she or a lot of people that used to troll black girls back in the day have changed. I think because it simply went out of style to insult black girls that they had to find something else to get popular off of. A lot of people use misogyny war to gain a fan base. And once Black Lives Matter started, once people like me made a melancholy black woman that was one of the first Tumblr accounts to actually talk about the issues that black girls go through with colorism, white privilege, light skin privilege, and all of that, then more people caught on and more people were talking about how black girls are beautiful, black girls are pretty, because there was a time where every time you looked up a black girl, it was either someone that was really light skinned that looked like Karuchi or Jasmine Sanders, or if they were dark skinned, she was pretty for a dark girl, 
or black girls were just ugly. Like it, there was a time where if you looked up black girls, the first thing you would see on Google um, with the automatic search results, black girls are ugly. Why are black girls ugly? Why don't black men like black women? It, it used to be that it, it was terrible. It was a terrible time to be a black girl, a gay person, um, part of the LGBTQIA or any part of a marginalized group during that time. And Sabrina contributed to it. And I don't have respect for people like that. She did issue out an apology after like a whole day of just not saying anything. She deleted the tweets where she said the N-word, but she didn't actually acknowledge the tweets that she had made. I guess she said some of the stuff aren't true and some of the stuff are true. Bitch, if you can't go into the specifics of what you said and why you are sorry, then don't say you're sorry at all. I'm sorry. Like, I actually did like her music, but again, I never really liked her as a person. You know, she just seemed conceited, and I didn't really say anything. I wasn't going to say anything, really, until, like, I found, uh, until something came out. And I'm glad that I was the first to say something, because up until then, no one was really bringing up Sabrina's race. No one was really saying how it's problematic that, you know, a white girl wants to uh, make it in a black female genre, or, you know, basically ride the waves of black girl aesthetic you know want to show off her booty like I got a booty you know I'm thick like a black girl and all of that and you know her like profiting off of black aesthetics like that, those are her own features like her full lips and curly hair but basically to be like a white Latina uh, getting praise for stuff that black girls have been shunned for uh, no one has really talked about that uh, I think a few people may have said like oh, it's Sabrina Black or Sabrina White, but no one has really pointed out that, you know, it's a little bit problematic for her to be in a genre that is specifically made for black people and black girls have created. Um, but I'm just really glad that now the truth has came out. That's all I have to say for now. I hope everyone has a great day.